All right, everybody. How you guys doing? Uh, this is Bobby Watts here. Continuing with the High Voltage podcast, we have a, another guest today, all the way from Croatia. Uh, please, everybody, welcome Mr. Paul Prescott. How you doing, Paul? Uh, hi there, Bobby. I'm fine and really great to meet you today. Yeah, you as well. You as well. So um, I got a hold of you through LinkedIn. I, 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 we, you know, I guess we had some mutual contacts and some mutual friends. And you have a business which I find is very interesting, and it seems to be. Uh, it seems like this could be very popular for anybody who has a consumer level drone. So perhaps could you tell me a little bit about your business and uh, what you offer to uh, people out there? Okay, so well, first of all, I'm a photographer. I've been doing uh, photography for over 16 years, and I've uh, mostly been selling uh, my photography through through stock. And I've gained uh, 16 years uh, of knowledge in the in the whole industry. And uh, as years went by, I got into videography, and five years ago, I got into doing droning. Okay. And um, and I started uh, amazing aerial agency. Okay. Is, uh, Amazing aerial agency. Got it. That's right. And I wanted to bring droners from around the world into one place to sell their photos at the premium prices. Okay. Um, so there's uh, possibilities of uh, putting your photos on, on, on Instagram, getting likes and followers, and maybe get a deal here and there. Um, however, um, I think it's really important as a photographer, as an artist, to actually make money. Uh, yes. from, from, from your work <laughs> and um, I was selling my photography on microstock so I was getting like 25 cents for a photo here and uh, I decided to go away from that and to go into the premium uh, section of, of photography where photos are sold uh, $600, $700 and uh, so that, that's, my wow. market, that, that's my market now Wow. And um, so I've uh, created a, a huge portfolio. Well, I can't say huge, but a very uh, curated portfolio with uh, 30 drones from around the world that I've handpicked. Wow. Uh, so from Bali, from Dubai, uh, they're all licensed droners, uh, some who actually started as amateurs but have kind of grown into, into professionals. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've created a, a network, a worldwide network of premium agencies. We have 15 premium agencies. Wow. Uh, within China, Taiwan, France, America, uh, in many, many countries. And uh, what's really great is that uh, we're selling our photos for hundreds of dollars. That's insane. I mean, that's that's really crazy. I was looking through your website here at amazingarialagency.com. Um, or amazing aerial. So what's your website? So amazing aerial. Dot agency. Ah, amazing aerial dot agency. Okay. Yep. So I was taking a look here and you're... Um, your, your photos that you have here are gorgeous. And so who is it that's the main customer of these of these photos? Who is it that are utilizing and paying? So I'm clicking right here, one of these photos, if I want to buy it, you know, it, it's, um, you know, $350 for full size. So who's paying $350 for a high quality drone image like this? Um, well, it's mostly magazines and enterprise clients. Okay. Um, so, for example, uh, the, the microstock industry would be like bloggers, for example, mm -hmm. and small designers. And the premium uh, segments are, are big magazines, big publishers that are using uh, hundreds of photos a month or enterprise clients uh, that want to make sure that uh, their photos are actually unique and they, they don't see the same photo uh, at, at their competitors. Sure, sure. That that makes a lot of sense. And I and I read in your your FAQ where you're splitting half of the profit with the drone pilot. Is that correct? Uh, that's true. So um, I believe that it's a partnership, mm -hmm. uh, and the partnership goes that uh, you do the shooting, and we're going to be doing all the marketing, and also we're going to support you. So um, I'm not interested in having thousands of drones. Uh, that's not really interesting for me. I really uh, want a handful of really talented drones. Sure. And uh, the reason why I want to have personal relationship with, with my drones is that uh, we actually get commissioned work. Okay. Um, this is um, this is growing very fast for us. So having um, our beautiful collection actually demonstrates the quality that we can actually deliver. And now uh, big companies are coming to us saying, "Hey, can you please uh, shoot for us?" Um, wow. So, for example, uh, this week we shot, uh, uh, I don't know if you know in America, Sir Richard Branson and Jerry Halliwell. Um, Absolutely. So he, he launched a, a new uh, a cruise uh, ship. 
Yes, I saw that. Yeah, Virgin, right? Virgin yeah, Cruise. Exactly. Well, it was amazing. Ariel that shot that. No way. Okay. Yeah, we were hired. Um, also, uh, at the end of last year, a production company uh, in London hired us to shoot for, 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 for National Geographic. They're doing Europe from above. So they also contacted us. So, um, And in Dubai, uh, we also have an amazing drone there. So people are reaching out to us because they know that we have talented uh, photographers. We have licensed uh, pilots. Mm-hmm. So they can really feel safe uh, when, when they're hiring us. This is really interesting because I think that's one of the first that I've heard, not the first, but, but it seems, um, you know, the filming industry as I've, or the aerial drone, aerial drone industry, as I know, it has always been one to hire, you know, like a freelancer, like a five person crew, like a, you know, a one to five person crew to go shoot. So now what you're saying is instead of going to the individual, um, uh, drone pilot himself, he's coming to you as the agency and then you are finding the shots and then you're going out to your team, I guess, based on location, probably That's and equipment right. and, and based on location and equipment to go ahead and, and, and get this, that imagery. That's really impressive. That's awesome. That, that's really great. So y- y- anything to say? Yes. I mean, I think um, as the regulations are, are being more and more defined um, and there's more and more risk actually flying, uh, clients they don't want to take any risk so when they're hiring a, a proper agency that uh, knows the regulations for example um, we have a document that we can send out saying okay this country uh, you need to be licensed or th- you need this authorization so we have we have all that information at hand mm-hmm. and uh, of course things change constantly so we we'll always need to do uh, fresh research of course uh, but as we have uh, photographers in each country they also know their regulations and we do some we do some research and then we get the authorizations to fly and then we get uh, we, we get the work done man that's great so so in addition to doing so obviously that the the shoot that you just did for virgin you wouldn't sell that on your platform then would you or is that only for that client uh, so that's uh, they have exclusivity of course Mm-hmm. Um, however, uh, we can use that content, uh, of course, to promote ourselves, to get other jobs. Um, I just, sure. asked, I just asked them, Hey, can we please uh, make our own little show reel about it and put it on LinkedIn and stuff? They said, Oh yes, it, it, there isn't a problem. So, uh, so, so that's good for us as an agency. So we can re-promote ourselves from the work that, that we've already done. Uh, mm-hmm. but, but, um, when we do jobs like that, it's, it's really exclusive and then the client keeps everything, of course. Um, sure. But how sure. In, in the typical, that's more of like a typical filming kind of arrangement to wear. And, but I'm, I'm surprised they let you share it because often they like to keep thing. Yeah, I guess it's about half and half. Half of them are like, sure, do whatever with it. And then the other half's like, nah, you're not allowed to share this. This is this is ours. Yeah, I mean, I was also expecting a no, <laughs> but they said yes. But they said yes. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you that's can't amazing. beat it. That's great. Yeah. That's really cool. So yeah. how, how do you see yourselves kind of growing, if, if you don't mind me asking? Like, would you rather put more time and effort into going, doing more of the shooting for, um, you, know, you know, for big companies and, and doing their, their footage? Or would you rather continuing to build your um, stockpile and your library that you can then go out and, and, and license and sell? So what's really important for Amazing Aerial Agency is uh, definitely not the number of drones, but the diversity. So I want to uh, grow our team. So we're, we're, we're 30 now. We grew from five to 30 uh, quite organically. Now we're doing a push to actually find new uh, photographers around the world. So we try to find diversity. So for example, we've just mm-hmm. hired two photographers from, from China, for example. Wow. Uh, we just spoke with, uh, with the New Zealand Herald uh, in, in New Zealand. And now we need to get a lot of imagery and footage from New Zealand. So I'm going to reach out to uh, photographers in, in, in New Zealand if they want to join our team. So I, I, need, to, I need to build uh, our network so we have diversity in terms of our portfolio. But also when clients come to us and saying, hey, we need to do an international shoot. So I will also approach to do a big uh, airline, for example, and they needed something like 20 five countries mm-hmm. so yeah, that's a lot yeah. <laughs> that, that's hard to orchestrate just by yourself yeah so i mean I, yeah, exactly yeah. so if we have the network then exactly. i would say, yeah. I say well we have the network in this country in that country and uh, then it will be a lot more appealing mm-hmm. no that that makes a lot of sense and so so with getting these pilots i i can assume that that's the the really difficult part how are you kind of vetting these these pilots like what are you looking for 
Uh, well, um, I'm looking for two things. Uh, first of all, the talent. Uh, and and the and the, the, the creative talent because some guys they might be drones but they don't have that eye so right. um, of course um, being a but then also sometimes I come across uh, some really talented drones but they don't have a license so mm -hmm. so I try to work on both so those who have licenses I like to work with them and then kind of work on their creativity and then those that are really creative saying hey listen upgrade your your, your, your equipment look into licensing get, get your, your drone licensing so i'm actually here uh, as an agent to support the team to grow yep. the team that we can learn from each other so like uh, bashir who's in in dubai he's like an official uh, pilot there and he's mm -hmm. doing a, a lot of work so his work can also influence uh, other uh, other team members uh, so it's it's all. I think well, what I, what I've really noticed uh, when I'm talking with uh, with uh, with aerial pilots, of course the money is definitely a fundamental. But being part of a team, uh, yeah, that, I like it. That's a very very high high value for them. No, that makes sense. And so, are you giving them the shot list, or are you just basically saying, "Hey, just go shoot really cool things," and and I'll take your word for it, and then just upload everything. Are, are, are you really curating the content or, you know, how, how's the content being created? Who comes up with the idea for the content? Um, so um, I really try to find uh, photographers who have their own style and I don't try to mess with their style. So, for example, uh, Christopher, who's in, in Estonia, he's got very like dark imagery, uh, the forestry. Mm -hmm. And so I, I, I don't try to interfere with him, but I, I, I say to him, listen, you've got a lot of. Uh, nature, why don't you try to add a little bit more cities or architecture? Um, Jude, uh, who's from Alaska, who travels six months of the year, um, I said, hey, why don't you try to include more people into your, into your photography? So he's traveling with his girlfriend and then he meets other people. So he put people into his photography. So it brings to life the, the, the actual location where he is. You know, if you're just shooting a uh, landscape, but you put a person, it gives like dimension and character. Right. So, right. Uh, so that's how I try to, 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 to actually support them. Okay, that makes sense. And, and from the site I saw, it was a little combination of both video and still photos. Is that right? That's right. Um, so 30% um, of our sales is generated from video. Uh, that's okay. also very important to know. So um, if you're doing video only, you can join us. If you're doing photo only, you can join us. If you do both, that's perfect. Mm -hmm. um, and what we try to do is we, we receive all your material. We're actually curating it. So it, that's the, you, that was one of your questions. Um, we have 10,000 photos and we've chosen 10%. That means we've been through 100,000 uh -huh. 100, photos to get oh. those 10,000 photos. Uh, we've been working on this for two and a half years. So, wow. so it's, it's, now it's really paying off, you know, and you, it's really good to have a vision and, yep. to, and to work on quality because um, we're working with photo buyers. So if they come into a website, let's say Shutterstock, and they have mm -hmm. 100 million photos, it's not serving them. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's too much. It's too much. That's right. Yeah, that, um, that's really amazing. I, I, can, I can totally see that. You know where I could see this being a really good service for these individual um, drone service providers is, you know, not every day, they're not shooting every day. You know, they're not filming every day. So even the guys that I know who shoot high-end cinema movies, you know, they might work, I don't know, maybe out of a, out of a month or something like that. Like they might, you know, out of 30 days or something, maybe they're shooting 15 to 20 of them. So they might have some off days or on travel days, they could capture stuff. So are you finding that you're getting some guys who just do this in their spare time who, you know, they have a day to just put aside to go just, you know, crank out some images. Is that kind of what you're seeing? Um, so what, what I have is a um, uh, lot started out as amateurs. And in the last two and a half years, a lot have kind of turned really real professional. Um, so a lot of the times uh, the videos and photos that they may be shooting is going to be exclusive, so they can't really use it. But, yeah, on, the other, yeah. but on the other hand, as you said, they may ha I might have some days off or they kind of uh, have, have the, 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 the offshoots that they can use. Um, also, I think what's really important to, to note is that um, our photographers are really, really busy. So we also offer a service where we actually keyword and edit the photos. So, oh, okay. So, okay. I mean, keywording is really important, but it's, it's, a, it's a real bummer because it takes a lot of talent to actually do keywording and captioning. And sure. so we're saying, hey, just send in your material. We'll charge you a small fee for it. Uh, uh, but at least you don't have to think about it. And it's online in one week, you know, instead of oh, like... Man. Yeah. That's really great. I mean, that's an amazing, 
That's an amazing service. So I, I hope to my listeners and viewers out there, if you're a drone pilot and you think you have what it takes, that you can definitely reach out to Paul here and see, you know, maybe he might be able to to get some pilots. So if, if you're looking for pilots, like what kind of equipment are you wanting them to have? Like what's the bare minimum? And then what's the the threshold? Because some of our, uh, you know, some of our customers are flying a Area Alexa Mini or a Red Epic that can shoot at 8K. I saw some of your videos. You, you know, you had a segment in above five, like 5K and above. So, you know, what's what are you expecting in terms of equipment for them to reach out to you? Uh, well, definitely uh, in photography, we need the, the the 20 megapixel minimum. 20 megapixel or above. Okay. Yeah. So that's like so, that's a fancy. Yeah. Phantom 4, for example, Magnetic 2, um, yep. and then of course you got the, the Inspire. Uh, regarding people that are f uh, like shooting some really high quality footage, mm -hmm. um, we're placing our, our imagery, uh, our, sorry, our videos, uh, not in like the, the, the high range um, agencies because we think that there's not enough sales to, to, to either that are generated. Sure. And sometimes people that are shooting with like high grade uh, cameras might not want to sell it at a, at a lower rate. And I understand that. And they're also uh, fine to sell it on, on their own or that's fine. But uh, yeah, we're looking around 4K and, uh, yep. and then 20 megapixel. Okay. No, that, that's really fair. That's fair. And so in terms of like, if someone's going to apply to you, um, you know, I, I understand you're looking for that eye and they're creative. And then are you just kind of background checking them on their Instagram feed or, you know, are, are you requesting something like, do you have an application or something? Uh, so what we do, uh, when you sign up, sign up on our, uh, on our website, uh, there's a, there's a, a field which says portfolio link. Mm -hmm. And so we're definitely going to look, look at your work. Um, and then, um, what we do, we go through an educational phase. So of course, a photographer might be a great editor uh, and it looks great on, on, on Instagram. But when it comes to actually selling a photo to a magazine, there's a bunch of technical uh, requirements which are really important. So what we say, send in your 21st photos. We'll look at them. We'll comment them. And then we go on from there saying, listen, there's too much noise here. Um, look, look at the, the exposure. So we kind of give uh, some great advice how to bring the, 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 the level of editing and also keywording metadata to, to, to a great level. So we're here to support uh, the guys in, in, in building their portfolio and becoming better uh, droners uh, so we can get them great jobs. Man, that's incredible. I think that's really great. So I, I, I would love to think that maybe if I was in college or something and had, you know, full-time university student and then you know, on the side, I have a Mavic 2 or something, and maybe I have the eye for it and some experience. So is that kind of who you're looking for? Or are you looking for these people who are just like, this is their full-time gig? Um, as I said, we were looking for, for, for talent. So it could be uh, some guy who's just bought his drone and he's like flying around and he, he's, he feels really inspired and he thinks, wow, I'm taking these great photos and they want to sell. Uh, so we were definitely looking for, for, for those guys. And we're also looking for the other guys. It's like, hey, listen, I'm a licensed droner. I fly every day and I'm really busy. But I do have some, some uh, offshoots uh, that I think would really generate some money. So, yeah. and, and also if I could get hired even more days, uh, from, from, from other creative, uh, work in commissions. Um, so yeah, that's, I'm, I'm really open to, to talking to a lot of people. That's really, that's really cool. So give it, give it to me straight. How much is your top earn? If you're okay with the divulging this, your top earning photographer, what's he making a month or, you know, a year or something like that, your, your top pilot. And then maybe what are the average pilots bringing in in terms of income? Okay. So um, as I mentioned, uh, we were growing our, our, our distribution network and for one, for one year we were working with one agency. Now we have 15 agencies, but with that uh, one, one agency, our top photographer has generated $10,000 in revenue. Wow. Uh, so, so it's, it's really good. Yeah, uh, absolutely. And, and that's with one agency. As I said, now we have fifteen. Uh, we wow. just we just signed with we just signed with a, with a bunch more. So um, we're really You're looking to grow sales. Yeah. Yeah, you, you look at, but but even still, a ten grand. I mean, that's a four or five x return on the cost of the drone. So I mean, that that's pretty darn that's pretty darn good in terms of uh, uh, return on investment. Yeah, so, and, and another thing, I mean, it's the same droner. Um, we, we're just going to get hired now uh, for like a one-day shoot for $2,500. So. Okay, yeah. 
I mean, that that's great. And I think that's cool that you could help them, you know, that, that you could go ahead and help them get the jobs too, because I think that that's the difficulty is establishing the brand and the trust and, and whoever's going to hire your, you, you guys for, for doing the jobs. I'm sure they appreciate that you've, you know, really gone through and looked at these pilots and made sure they're licensed and everything. So I, I think that's a really interesting business model you have there. I think that's really cool. I, I It's probably the first I've heard. So that's really exciting. Yeah, well, the thing, I'm, I just hired uh, two people. Uh, one one uh, person, her name is Yanyu, and she's going to be taking care of, of all the photographers. Okay. Uh, and then I find another person who's just taking care of the sales. So um, reaching out to magazines, reaching out to clients, and it's really paying off now. I've been all day today just talking to new clients about new jobs. So it's really paying off. Man, that's incredible. That's really cool. That's really, really cool. So are you still yourself? You, you know, you said you, you were involved with photography and, and drones. Are you still, are, do you fly as much or um, has this real, has flying taken the back seat? Because that happens with business. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, a, I'm an avid uh, flyer. And uh, of course, when I'm at work and now it's winter, it's, 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 it's not the season for flying for me. Um, but uh, summer is coming and I definitely, I take uh, two months off. Mm-hmm. And, okay, really? Good yeah, for you. Uh, and I, I go to business. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, I of course I, I also make films, so I'm down down the Croatian coast. I'm making films, but I'm also off and I'm flying, and so it's uh, yeah. So kind of part of my year is uh, developing the amazing aerial, and part of my year is actually shooting also for clients and making films. Okay, and then in in Croatia, how are the regulations? How you know how is it to fly a drone there? Um, so you don't have the possibility to pass a, a license, so you can't be a licensed pilot here. Um, it okay. just it just works by zones. So, for example, uh, if you want to fly, you have to register saying that I am here in Croatia and I do want to fly. Okay. Uh, so, the, like the zone one, uh, zone two, and zone three, uh, well, actually, the first two zones you need authorization, mm-hmm. and then the other zones you don't need authorization. Okay. So even though, yeah, yeah, that 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 doesn't seem all that bad to be honest. I, I I expected it to be, you know, for a country such as Croatia, I, I expected the regulations to be quite strict. Uh, well, uh, and regulations are changing by the week. So next week, uh, the regulations could change. So um, in Europe, they try to have uh, one regulation to regulate all of Europe. Uh, and that's happening at the moment. So once that gets signed off, then every single country in Europe should have uh, the same regulation. Okay. Yeah, that would be, I, I think that that would be a lot more convenient. Are they close on that or are they still a little ways away? Um, well, I've heard from, um, it's called Node. It's like the network of droners in Europe or something like that. Okay. okay. Yeah. And uh, so they, I, I subscribe to, to their newsletter and it's current. So it's it's in Parliament, the European Parliament, and they're trying to draft laws at the moment. So it's definitely ongoing. Wow. Oh, that's really cool. Well, I hope that that works out because I think that what, what we saw here in the US is once it got regulated, it became so much more prevalent. You know, so many more people got into it. Because I think when it's not regulated, it's it, it's scary. People don't know whether to invest a lot of money into equipment or, or whatever, because it could be illegal down the road. So true. I hope for your sake that that happens soon. That would be nice. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah, I think uh, there's uh, always this uh, little bit of fear about regulations and oh, we won't be able to fly. But at the end of the day, uh, everybody has to be safe. Yeah. And uh, I think it's uh, definitely a must. No, it, it does make sense. Um, you know, now that I was thinking about it, I was thinking back to your photos. So if I'm a drone pilot now, um, either a professional or probably, let's just say I'm starting, mm-hmm. um, you keep, you were, you were really concentrating on the creative, you know, the creative has to be good. They got to have that eye. So can you give me maybe like two or three pointers on when I take a photo that needs to be like magazine quality or something, you know, I'm seeing a lot of these straight down photos nader or whatever people want to call it um i'm seeing a lot of those style photos but then i'm also seeing a lot of others so can you maybe explain like what are like the top two or three things i can do as a pilot in terms of framing and adjusting and position what's your take on that 
Okay, uh, let's read. How to line up? How to line up the perfect shot? <laughs> okay. Um, well, firstly, from a technical point, and this this is a mistake that uh, a lot of droners uh, do at the beginning. Um, you, uh, you have a possibility of um, of having a four by three or a sixteen by nine when you shoot the photo, and when you're yep. shooting a sixteen by nine, you're actually losing the pixels. So first of all, you need to always shoot in full resolution and not crop your photo at all. So you have the full dimensions of 20 megapixel. Or so 4.3. So 4.3 yeah. ratio. Yeah, okay. that's right. Um, okay. and now another thing is about uh, diversity of photography. So that's true. A lot of people shoot uh, top down and it kind of looks cool if you've got some designs. Um, but um, what magazines also are looking for, they're looking for locations. Mm -hmm. So recognizable locations. So uh, so okay. what, so what I what I recommend uh, when when you go out and shoot is to have in mind first of all um, either some people either shoot video or either shoot photo. It's maybe to like uh, set set in the mind that you can do photo and video in the same flight. So yeah. for example, you just let's say when you take off, you push on play. And you just go up and you fly to one location and try to set your your, your framing for the photo. Mm -hmm. And then you say, okay, now I'm in the great position to take a photo. Mm -hmm. So I'll stop filming. So all that time, you basically created footage that, that you can use. Then you stop the footage and you take photo. And let's say it's a top down. So yep. then, I, then I take the photo top down. Wow, this looks great. Now mm -hmm. that I'm in this position, I said, hey, now what's around me? Is there any like panoramas I can do? So then sure. I bring up the camera and I start looking around. Okay, this could be good. Then I do panorama shots like, mm. like that and like yep. that. And then I have like a really beautiful panorama. And then from that panorama, I can create another shot in, in post-processing. In post -pro processing. Understand. Oh, so so the top guys, the skilled guys are doing a little bit of everything in, in, in a flight to maximize their use. That's right. That's right. So um, what's also very important is uh, when you're when you're flying is to check out where the sun is. Mm -hmm. So uh, normally, Good lighting. Uh, yeah, that's Good lighting. right. So uh, as a normal photographer, ground photographer, you're like you're kind of looking to maybe shoot in the, in the evening and maybe uh, you know in the morning. Uh, but I think drone photography um, is kind of great because you can have the sun at midday right above you and then you get some really nice shots as well um, right. of course uh, in the morning and the evening is also very nice um, but try and especially when you're shooting into the into the sun or into the sea for example not to get those reflections to try to have the the, the sun behind you when you're shooting so you don't have uh, these these uh, glaring uh, effects or overexposure or the drone in the shadow, like the drone shadow in the photo. You, <laughs> you don't, you don't want to have that. Yeah. Um, and, and so I know with a lot of royalty free um, programs. So like with us, we use some of ones. I think story blocks or video blocks. One, one of those things. That's but right. then I'll, I'll look for specific footage, like kid kicking a ball or um, car. You know, person and uh, exiting a car. So are you recommending that your pilots just shoot these kind of like literally everything or are they mainly doing just like scenery and landscapes and, 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 and kind of B-roll or, or is it more like focused on, you know, surfer catching a wave? What are you, what are you recommending? Um, I always uh, recommend setting up shoots and especially when you're shooting with people and people are always uh, great. I mean, most photos uh, that sell have people in it because you were okay, really good to know. Yeah, so you, really, so you really, so you really, it's not scenic landscape, like maybe it is, but, but most of them have, have people in them. Well, the thing is that, um, especially with drone, people don't think that they can shoot people, you know, so okay. a lot of our portfolio is actually, is landscapes and nature and we don't have a lot of people. So that's why I'm really pushing for our, our team to shoot people because, yeah, yeah. Um, and also another thing is that, um, aerial doesn't mean 500 meters up in the, in the sky. Aerial could can mean, hey, this is a good tracking shot. You can person be on the, on the top of a of a cliff, and you like you're panning around him. It's just a, it's a great opportunity to have a different viewpoint. So sure. I I try to bring the drone down as much as possible, and uh, definitely plan shoot. So uh, when we're selling our photos and videos commercially, we need like model releases. So you you get your friends, you, you get them to sign the model releases, and then then the, the, the photos have a lot more value because. Otherwise, people, they uh, companies will not buy a photo if they're not model released.
without a release. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. And with with, with regards to the drone shots, I mean, I, I completely agree. I, I'd say so like we started filming with drones. It's probably like 10 years ago. And, um, you know, I would always get really tired as the drone pilot on shoots. I would get tired of it's like, okay, let's do the straight overhead or, okay, let's do the just behind tracking shot and, or, or, or let's go, go up to 400 feet and get the real wide shot. I always think the best shot for a drone is somewhere in between like a jib or a crane and a helicopter. So like, it's those crazy kind of shots that you can't get like the, you know, using a tree as a wipe, um, yeah. you, you know, things like that coming in low and going high and being really dynamic. So are you seeing that as well with your video segment, like those types of shots? Uh, well, I mean, uh, when I, um, create films for clients, uh, that's exactly what, what I'm, what I'm looking for. You know, I'm trying to, to get in there, uh, getting to see the people, uh, that the subject is really, really, uh, present rather than being yeah. too high. And, uh, yeah. so your, your question was also about, uh, what should we be suiting landscape or people? Uh, again, it's, it's about diversity. It's trying to get the most out of one shoot. Sure. So of course you can shoot the people right from above, but then get every single angle and then start playing around things that you didn't even think about. Yeah. So that's why it's also important to have uh, multiple batteries, of course. Uh, yeah. The, the right equipment, the right equipment. And with, with the shooting, I remember we used to joke, uh, what do we call it? High, wide, high, wide and stupid. So it's like th this uh -huh. shot, it's like, oh, we're just high, wide, stupid for this shot. So, um, yeah. No, that's really cool, though. I, I, th I think you guys have something there, and I, I wish you guys the best of luck. I, I think that sounds incredible. So if if there's a pilot out there who wants to reach out to you and, and perhaps apply to be um, a, a pilot for you guys and capture content, what's the best way for them to go about this? Uh, well, today I just activated the Become a Contributor. Okay. Uh, so uh, amazing aerial dot agency. Click uh, become a contributor, and then you have the page, and there I have all the FAQs, uh, the commissions, the the copyrights, uh, all that is in one page. And there's a form. You just fill in your 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 first name and your email, and a, and a link to your portfolio. And then we'll look at it, and uh, then we'll follow up with you. Man, that's really great. That's super cool. Well, listeners out there, if you have a drone, and it, and and you're like sitting there watching Netflix all day, not flying your drone. Like there's no excuse. You should freaking hit up Paul, show him some good work and go out there and, and make some money and, and, and help this guy with his business. And um, I, I mean, it's a win-win for everybody. It really is. Cause then they can probably use it on their, can they, can they then piggyback and use that on their social pages and stuff? Or is it only for you guys? Uh, no. So I always give the opportunity for them, of course, to use it on their social media, on their websites. Um, if they have direct clients, sell it to your clients. That's great. Oh, cool. Yeah, um, that's awesome. I'm, I'm just giving you added value. We put you into our distribution network. We get you, uh, we get you clients. Uh, so it's cool. basically a win-win. Man, that's amazing. That's amazing. Well, Paul, I really appreciate you chatting today. Anything else that you'd like to uh, leave us with? Um, well, I think we've kind of gone full circle and I'm really happy that we had this chat. And, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'm, I'm really excited about this project because I think uh, aerial photography is, is really amazing and we can see the planet from, from different perspectives that we haven't seen before. And I think it's very uh, awe-inspiring. And, yeah, and, and to make a living from this, I think, I mean, I've been doing this for 16 years, you know, and I have to reinvent myself all the time as an artist, you know, become a filmmaker, mm -hmm. a photographer, a video. And I think uh, things are changing very fast. And uh, I think it's also very important to have a, a, an aerial only uh, platform and not to mix our, our, our talent with, with other, other photos. Uh, sure. So we really, really stand out. I think that's very important. No, that makes a lot of sense. And I think you're providing a great service to drone pilots and hopefully this can continue to, to grow and, you know, you get a lot more freelancers out there doing some good work. So yeah, yeah. that's awesome. Well, Paul, I definitely appreciate your time today and uh, drone pilots definitely hit up, hit him up and um, check his website out. See if you can become a pilot for him. And uh, I appreciate it. Best of luck. All right. Thanks a lot, Bobby. That's great. Awesome. Thanks, Bob. See you. Speak to you. Bye.